Okay, hope everybody's keeping well um, and welcome back uh, to the Flight Tang uh, Studio. We're going to do the second uh, new series now on Claret Flies, as you can hopefully see from the uh, from the picture. Uh, what we're going to try to do is something a wee bit different. I've uh, been playing around with some software, so uh, we'll hopefully see how this goes, see how the technology goes. Um, but yes, this is a second new series that we're going to do on Claret Flies. And some people have asked me about Claret Flies and uh, yeah, the ones that we would use here, particularly in Ireland, but also in further field. Um, and I was sort of thinking back then, and I'd written an uh, article on Triton Salmon way back in September 2018. Uh, so it was actually called A Case for Claret. So it was looked at four different patterns, Claret patterns that were popular, uh, not only here in Ireland, but also in uh, Scotland and England, places like the River Tyne. Uh, are very really quite popular with Irish shrimp flies and the uh, McCormick's is one of those. So yes, the McCormick's is the first one that we're going to come up with. Um, probably one of the most popular clare flies here in Ireland. Um, really, really good fly. Uh, and a lot of people's sort of secret or uh, patterns. Uh, but before we actually start some tying, um, some of you may have seen this, but I did a wee uh, dug out some footage uh, so we'll show this first and hopefully this will work. See how this goes. So hopefully you enjoyed that uh, wee video um, and the reason why I showed to you proof this as they say is in the pudding and if you look the eagled eyes amongst you there you can see that that fish was actually caught on a McCormick's uh, shrimp and what I've actually done is I managed to dig that one out and it was actually a little tube version of the fly uh, as I say, it would be a pattern I particularly use myself. Um, I suppose most commonly um, from about sort of yes, yeah, summer onwards, so more of a back end fly. I know people who caught springers on them, so I mean it's a good versatile pattern. Um, yeah, if you know that pull it from the video clip, you know I wouldn't have been using a, a double. But I just got a wee double on there today. So that's basically the pattern. And without further ado. We shall get started. Um, and yeah, if the hook I'm going to be using today is just a down out uh, double. These ones are by loop. And I'm going to be a size 8, just hopefully to make it a little bit easier for people to uh, to see. And the thread I'm going to be using is a UTC uh, 70. And I'm going to be using uh, red thread because the body of this fly is uh, claret. So again, just start. Right about the midpoint of the of the fly, uh, and then for the tail, uh, we've got uh, oval gold tinsel. So just cut a length of that off, um, and just bring that underneath, just as usual, and tie that in. Um, 
I'll work my way down to the back of the back of the fly. So just flatten that out. Sometimes the oval tinsel can be uh, a little bit twisted, so just make sure that that's uh, it's nice and flat. Nice and flat. Just work up towards the hook points. Um, so the hook points are good. Um, a good reference point in terms of where to stop tying the the tag in. So just bring that underneath. And you work your way up to the that midpoint. So the McCormick's the thing, I suppose, that sets it apart. Essentially, it it's, follows the same sort of pattern as a traditional Irish um, shrimp fly. Um, but the thing that sets it apart is the tail. And it follows, um, hopefully you can see here, you can maybe see there in this picture. Uh, but essentially, it's it follows the overall pattern of a traditional Irish shrimp fly. So you get a yellow uh, mid hackle, a front hackle, and then a rear hackle. But the thing that's different is that there's some bucktail. It's maybe a bit hard to see just against that, but there's bucktail uh, in the middle of that the rear hackle. So it's what we sometimes call as cloaked, um, and that's the thing that really is a bit different about it from other particular patterns. So yeah. Uh, it's a claret fly, so I've got a nice uh, claret bucktail. Um, so we're going to tie a wee bit of that into the uh, into the rear for the tail, and just take a nice pinch of that. Um, and it's, people can get quite particular about claret, um, and the McCormicks uh, in particular, people like a nice dark claret. Um, and I think I remember saying one point so people particularly uh, what they would do is they would actually dye the well with other feathers or bucktail uh, fluorescent red first and then they would dye it with claret so it gives a very nice dark and deep um, a deep claret so you don't want overly much of the bucktail so we'll take some of that out until we so I've got enough so you're happy with it basically so just maybe a few of those threads um, and just lay it on top and again it's about a length or a length and a half of the body and just work our way to that midpoint And we're just going to cut it off and you can cut it off also at an angle it just helps to create a better taper okay so that's our claret tail in and then the flash there's a bit of flash which is in the middle of this um, and generally it would be gold um, this is just called micro uh, crystal hair. So I prefer the micro stuff rather than the standard. I think it just gives a nicer, a nicer feel to it. Um, so just double that over, um, and then lift and lock underneath, up and over. A um, couple of wraps, and then just fold that back on itself. And just tie that in and then down to the length of the tail. So that's essentially our tail tied in, uh, the, the middle part of the tail. Um, and then the bit that, as I say, is a wee bit different is the it's cloaked in a claret uh, feather. Um, the pattern calls for either a, uh, it's a large uh, cock hackle or a golden pheasant so if you have a golden pheasant dyed claret all the better uh, but I didn't actually have one so I'm using a large uh, claret feather here um, 
and I suppose what you want to do again always important to think about proportions so the proportions of this fly is uh, like a golden pheasant tail uh, it's approximately one and a half times the length of the of the hook of the body so you can see here the feathers that I want are actually fairly high up on the feather uh, a lot of times whenever you would uh, maybe tie a feather in you would want to tie out these feathers here uh, sort of up in the in the middle um, but I want to be using these ones here so we'll strip off some of the excess that we don't really need all this waste um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to start tying it in a lot further back than you would normally so um, even further back again so hopefully you can see that but it's these nice long feathers here that I'm wanting uh, to give us that effect so we'll get a wee bit of wax just wax our thread and essentially this is the same as a if you think of it as a golden pheasant tail except that we've got bucktail already tied in and so make sure that's tied in nicely and just use the back of the scissors just as usual just stroke those fibers back and it helps to produce or sort of introduce that backward angle which is essentially what you want just helps when you're doubling the hackle over and hopefully you can see that yeah it's a nice doubled hackle i'm going to start to wind that uh, over it. Just going to cut off that waste stock for the moment. I don't need that. And then just get our hacker pliers. And then we're just going to wrap this around just as we would the normal hackle. A golden pheasant hackle. And as I say, it is a wee bit awkward because you have the the hook points. I just wrap that, and that'll be enough. Yeah, this is a McCormick's is an interesting pattern. Um, it follows the style of a modern tying of a Kulma killer, which is essentially there's a number of different versions of this fly. Uh, the Kilroy Killer, killer. Uh, but the modern version is essentially the same as this except the clarts is placed in yellow um, first time I actually saw that I think was way back in one of the Locks Agency fairs when uh, Robert Gillespie was tying some uh, and I thought they were great looking fly a very good pattern for springers but essentially yes all the claret is replaced uh, by yellow so I think somebody liked that particular tying and so they created the McCormick's so let's put that back into the into the vise so you can see now that that gives a nice hopefully you can see that a nice cloaked effect uh, but as with our golden pheasant what I'm going to do uh, is just put a wee bit of a couple of wraps of, of thread just over that hackle just to um, give it the right angle um, so yeah let's re hack a fiber we don't really want let's get rid of that um, so that's that's our tail tied in and then the next thing we'll be tying in is the body and uh, it's a claret body with an oval gold oval tinsel so we'll just cut a, a length of that um, and tie that in If any 
anybody has any questions, feel free to answer, uh, put them in the comments box. And I'll try my best to answer those. Um, just see there's something coming. Yeah, just a read message there. I'll get back to that version. So, yeah, so we tied in our rib. And then we'll go back to the midpoint. And then the floss in this is a Clark floss. Uh, I'm going to use Danvils again. As I said, it gives a really nice sheen to the to the fly. So we'll cut a length of that off. Um, We'll use the lift and lock method again. So underneath, uh, just bring that forward. Um, and as I say, you can just flatten that out just to make sure the floss is, is nice and flat. Just makes it easier to wrap. So we're going to do a double, a double wrap. So starting at the midpoint, working down, and then we'll we'll work backwards again. nice touch and turns uh, and I've used because I've used the red tie and thread it just makes it a wee bit easier to uh, if you did leave any gaps but when you do a double run of the floss uh, it'll generally covers up any gaps not that the fish would particularly mind so that's our body clar nice clar body um, and then what we're going to be doing is just putting that rib on See, three turns is generally pretty much spot on. Turn that rib off and we'll keep that uh, for the front rib. Um, so that's our body, uh, rear body of the fly. And then the mid tackle, again, is a nice claret. Um, I say there's lots of different types of claret. Um, I'll give you a few examples here. Um, so that's a that's a saddle. I got one actually Pete Keeley gave me. That's a nice dark claret. Um, that one there is more of a sort of ruby claret, uh, which I use for some of the some particular patterns. Again, nice color. And then that's a darker claret. And as I say, dark claret quite often would be dyed red before it goes claret, and it gives a very deep. Uh, people, some people would say. Uh, McCormick's won't work unless you have that, uh, a deep dark claret, um, but that's, as I say, people, it's all about confidence. So I've got a, um, a claret feather here, so I'm just going to tie that in, and that's our mid hackle. Turn it this side as normal. Um, So I just double the feather back. And Cormix is a is a good pattern to say I would use it particularly in speed rivers. Um you'd be amazed how well a claret actually stands out in the water. Um, I think that's probably why it is so successful. Although I think claret has been a very popular colour for lock fishing for a long time and continues to be so it it's a very very good colour. Uh, but maybe a colour that's maybe not just as as popular for some people. Just as usual we just want to be doubling over the the hackle and stroke on those fibers back just as we go. So do one more hackle round, I think that'll that'll do us. So I just prefer tying in on the uh, on the 
bear hackle stock. Take a few more of those off. Just makes that a wee bit neater. that thumb again just as usual just stroke those feathers back and to give yourself a nice a nice even hackle right so that's our um, our middle hackle in and then we're just going to tie in the rib and the rib of this fly is again uh, some, same as the uh, the rear body. So we've got a gold uh, gold rib, gold oval rib. Just flatten that thread by counter spinning it, and then get a wee bit more of the floss. Force. There's a lift and lock method, so just underneath and pull it back. Try not to do too much, uh, otherwise, it becomes a slides out. It just wraps again, just down the body towards the end. Just a couple of wraps just to finish that off. And then just our rib. finished. What I'm going to do now is because the head of the fly is actually black, I'm going to take this opportunity to change the thread um, to black. That just means then that that's the, you can use clear varnish for the head of the fly. Um, so I'll just take this spool. Just reattach that. So essentially, just two things left to do on the fly. We have got the uh, jungle cock, and then we've got um, jungle cock, and then we've got our front tackle. those rogue feathers away so hopefully people uh, are enjoying this Robert I see you've joined us hope you're enjoying it um, Um, so yes, last couple of things in are the uh, jungle cock eyes. Um, or uh, eyes, but uh, I like to tie them rift. Let's just have a look. These are a couple I prepared earlier. So we're just going to tie those in. Um, bring that one 
say I just always lock them in so double them back in each other and then it just means I'm not going to, to go anywhere so hopefully you can see that this was tied in so then the last thing we're going to be doing is the front hackle which on the McCormick's is an orange uh, and again it's personal preference but I follow the worst of modern tying of a our shrimp fly so I like the shorter hackle at the front so we'll just tie that in um, and that'll be the last thing that we'll actually be, we'll be tying in I suppose orange and claret is another classic combination, colour combination, it's, it's proven to work. Um, so, it's certainly the one that gives me confidence. As I say, that's, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. If you have confidence in the fly that you're using, generally you'll fish better, you'll fish harder, you'll fish longer. And more times than not, you'll actually catch more because you are confident in your setup and what you're actually doing. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So, I'm just going to finish that off. I just like to stroke those feathers back with the with your thumb. Essentially, the fly done. Just gonna make a nice, or a nice even head now, just to finish it. Finish it off, and then just a wee bit of wax just to tighten that. And then we'll do a whip finish just to, to finish it. the fly done um, and we'll get a little bit of varnish and just varnish the head I like the I think the black is a nice contrast as well with the um, with the orange, it was a good. I can't always find contrast gives a gives you a bit of definition of the fly. Right, and that is essentially us done. Um, Cormix. Um, so hopefully you can see there. Um, yeah, super fly, um, and that's a little tube version of it. Uh, but a fly that I would certainly have confidence, um, confidence fishing, um, and hopefully you can see there. So you've got that. It's the Irish 
sort of Irish style of town, but you've got that buck tail in the middle, which just gives it something a little, little bit extra. So yeah, hopefully you have, uh, you've enjoyed that today. And yeah, just trying to do something a wee bit different than maybe I did before. So we'll see how hopefully all the technology has worked. Um, and yeah, that's really the McCormick's. That was the first in the pattern of the series. Let's see. Tomorrow, uh, I think I'll try the, uh, the flamethrower. Don't know if you can see that. Maybe actually a bit, a bit easier to see that uh, at this angle. But yes, that's the the flamethrower version of it. Uh, Claret flamethrower. So again, not a very good pattern, and a, just a slightly different style of tying. Uh, that's the frame floor, Duncan Egan's style of time that he came up with, which was very, very good and a uh, very, very effective pattern. So hopefully you have enjoyed that. Um, I say if you have, subscribe to see more and join me tomorrow. And uh, yeah, as always, stay safe and uh, yeah, hopefully see you tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.